Good day everyone, this is Damres Photography and today I'm going to be sh teaching you how I'm to teaching, teaching full retouching so I'm going to be retouching this from beginning to the end yes, full retouching so first of all, as you can see I have my image, I've already selected I've removed, I've sele done select subject so I've removed the image from the background I'm also remove the background for the image if you don't know how to do select subjects if you don't know how to do that you can check my previous tutorials I've done that before so what I used was a quick max edit, edit tool I first picked my image and then I first did ctrl J for this layer and then I clicked on select subject then I used the quick um, the quick, ed, um, quick editing max tool using a brush tool to edit in quick max mode I use the brush to use it using quick max mode to fine tune my my what they call my selection. After doing that, I click on Ctrl G. By doing that, I've already selected, I've already removed the image from the background. So to remove the background for the image, I click on Ctrl and click on that top layer, the one with the image removed from the background. I clicked on it. It made the selection again. I click on um, what I right click and then selected inverse just to invert my selection. I went back to the um, first layer here. That's the alternate layer here. And then I click Ctrl J and then I was able to make a selection of the background from the image you get. So we are working on this layer first. First of all, we want to clean up this background. So first of all, work on this layer. First thing I will do is I'll just pick out from let's say around here then go down here yes so what I'm going to do now what I'm trying to do is okay ctrl C I think it's around here yeah go down to around here so what I'm trying to do is um, I'm trying to just pick out areas which will be needed to fill up the background so right now you see i'm having a lot of glares from the light around here truthfully i don't know why my light is usually giving glares around here i'm trying to find out the reason but for now i don't know okay so because of this glares i'm having around here i want to just remove that so to remove that i'm just going to remove this from the selection because i don't want my background the new background i'm going to be having to have those kind of glares so I'm going to do around here. I think that's okay. And also, I'm also going to add this dot I don't like. Also, this reflector, I'm removing it from my... I'm even removing this reflector. I don't want it to be added. Used to add to the selection. Also, this place here, this backdrop. I'm removing it. But I want to add this to the selection, this other part of the background. I want to add them to the selection. Oh, so I just did that. I think I should click on Control, select inverse. Okay, yes, I made a mistake. I was meant to select inverse. I was wondering what was happening. Okay, so I selected inverse. Like I said, I just want I want to fill up these places. These places. These are what I want to fill up. So I'll go to content. I will fill, and then let's allow Photoshop to do its magic. It's not usually perfect, but at least it's better. It's usually better. We'll still fine tune this later. You get. So, but first of all, let Photoshop fill out. All this, let for sure fill out all this, um, all these places that we don't want in our image. Let's for sure. You see now, Photoshop has filled that up. Like I said, it's not usually the way we want it to be, uh, but, or what they call it, uh, or what they call it, uh, but we can work with it. Okay, so waiting for that to, for that to what the call. We're waiting for that to just work. Waiting for that to finish loading. Blah blah blah. Let it load. Okay, that's good. As you can see now, that's what we have right now. So just click on OK. As you can see, we filled up this, we just deselected. As you can see, we filled this up. But I told you, like I said, it's not usually that clean. I could just blow this out, but that's not what I want to do. But then again, you see, it's better, better from here to here, here to here. It's better now. It's better now. Let me go back here. Okay, this one I could just pick up. I could just right. Let me first create a clipping max. Clip this to the underneath layer. Right click and then click it. Create a clipping max. Then go back to this layer and then match that clipping max. Next thing, before I move on, I want to pick my clone stamp 
and clean up this because this was not meant to be there so i'll just go and clean that up okay good so next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to pick my solid color like i said this image this stuff is not as clean as i want it to be so i'll just go to adjustment layer and click on solid color click on it okay off it double click on it and then pick a layer a, a color in between all this i don't want to pick normally i'm meant to pick around here but because of i set up my background behind the wall so the light was coming in through it you get so because of that i don't really want that to be showing on my image so i'm just going to pick a color around here because this is sort of the mid-tones outside this wall normally it should be here but i'll just pick this one okay okay as you can see this is a clean background but we don't want our background to be looking like artificial you get normal i could just do it like this i could do it like this and then it's all you get it's cool and good and clean but then again as you can see we are not having the texture of the background on this image anymore so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to fill it depending on like i said it depends on your digression i can just take it to 80 and one thing again with filling up too much is that you lose the shadows i could bring back the shadows by using uh, what they call the, the i could use the um i could use my what they call it, to bring back the, the um shadows i could use a, a what they call this again i could use the curves layer to bring that bring back my shadows so that is not really a problem so what i'm just going to do now is you can see we have this but one thing i told you again it's looking too artificial so what i do again is i'll just off this one again i double click on it copy that color that color um the color i'm copying the color i used here i just copied it and then i'm going to go and just pick my rectangular max tool rectangular marquee tool and then i'm just going to select this part of the image before the floor part i'm selecting the top part before the floor part and i'm using that selection to make another solid color and then i also paste that color i copied so we have that on top of it and then i make sure the fill is also the same i use 80 percent here for the fill so i'm just going to make sure the fill here is 80 next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pick my brush to make sure my flow is at let's say three percent three percent is enough and then i'm just going to go to that my max tool and then i'm just going to try to paint i could use the white i could use the black any one i feel like i'm just going to paint between that edge so that you the what i'm trying to do is that i don't want the meeting points to be too sharp I want it to be there for you to know that okay that was the beginning of the floor of the background but i don't want it to be too sharp you get i don't want it to be too sharp because i can see before it was too sharp your meeting points were too sharp if you see before before this it was too sharp like just a straight line but after i was able to brush it you can see now it's there you know that okay this is the meeting point but it's not too sharp you get so right now we have a really really clean background you get to before after before after we have a really really clean background so right now i could just create a clipping marks i could just clip those those two solid colors to the background layer and then i match them together but before we move on like i told you because we because we use solid colors we had and we did not reduce the fill enough normally i could just reduce it to like let's say 80 if I reduce, I mean, if I reduce the field to like 50, it, the background, that's the shadows will still be showing. Even right now, you can see the shadows, but it's not pronounced, you get. So what you could do right now is, you could just pick your curves layer and then change it to multiply. You don't need to do much else. Just change it to multiply and control I, yeah? Control I, so invert it. Pick your brush to make sure your flow is at 1%. Yes, 1%. And then off this beneath layer so that you'll be able to see where the shadows are you get and then you can just paint over those shadows you get so what i'm just going to do i'm having shadows around here yes i'm having shadows around here so i'm just going to paint where those shadows are you get 
just going to paint where the shadows are you get so i think uh, that's all for the shadows and then i'm just going to on everything and see the difference of what this that has brought if it's not enough uh, you see now i'm having those shadows there and if i think it's not enough i could just go there and then just increase it yet by just bringing down my stuff you get as you can see i've been able to increase that shadows so now we're still having the shadows on the floor if you can see that's around where we had the shadows before so now we are still having those shadows there and then we're having a clean clean image clean background you get so what i'm just going to do is that i'm just going to create a clipping mask for that too and then match that together so as you can see we have before after before after nice clean background next thing we're going to just use the spots healing with healing brush tool to clean up the spot on the skin so i just have to just go through the skin as you can see just go through the skin and see if i'm having spots i want to clean so right now you can see this image has a lot of noise probably because we didn't shoot we shot this on a low light to get we shot this on a low light so we're having a lot of noise but no problem we'll try to adjust that later you get so we're having some um, what they call it? we're having some uh some spots here so we're going to clean that we're going to clean that so while you are using your spot healing brush just pick pick or um, what they call it? pick uh samples from around the area you are cleaning up you get just pick samples from around the area you're cleaning up yeah so everything will be able to rhyme and look alike you get so just pick samples from around the area you're cleaning up okay so we have that for cleaning up the skin so next thing we're going to put all those into one background layer we're going to put all those into one background layer and then we're going to name that bg which means background which means background for me so i'm just going to put that into one layer bg which means background next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to click or make a control a stamp layer um what we what do we call a stamp layer stamp layer is a margin of all the layers you've worked with without deleting deleting them you know right not normally if i click on right click and then i click on merge visible or flatten you see that i would have all the layers i've worked with will be merged into one layer here but what we do with match uh, with stamp layer is we'll match everything but still not delete those layers because we don't want those layers deleted in case we made some mistakes we want to go back to previous edits it will be easy for us to just delete the top layers and then just go back to the beneath layers you get what i'm trying to say so um so i'm just going to click on ctrl or shift e that's how you do your make your match your stamp layer ctrl or shift e and then you have your stamp layer so i've made a stamp layer and then i'm also click, going to click on ctrl j to copy that layer the beneath layer i'm going to name it low the top layer i'm going to main name it high this is what we do we want to create do an, a frequent separation so i'm just going to put those two into one folder and then i'm going to name that fs which is frequent separation open that uh, off the top layer and then i work on the beneath layer first I'll zoom into my image. I'll zoom into the skin, into the face. Then I'll go to filter. I'll go to noise. I'll go to median. Then I'm going to find the perfect radius for this image. So this one is too high. I'm going to just go with three for now. Let's see how is. Let's see the result. Okay, three is not enough. Before, before after three is looking good but not bad too but we're still seeing some of the um textures it has not totally blown out the texture so let us try four before 
have to. Okay, let's work with four. Let's work with four. Okay. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to on the high layer. We go to filter and we'll go to image. We'll go to apply. Then on the layer panel, we'll click on low layer. On the blend mode panel, blending on the blending, we'll click on subtract. Then you make sure your opacity is at 100, your scale is at 2, your offset is at 1 to 8, and then you click on OK. Then you change your blend mode here, change it to linear light. Then we've made the, uh, what they call it, then we've had what, then this is the layer, this is the FX layer, we've done what we need for FX, now we just have to use the mixer brush to, to brush over, to blend the light and darkness together, that is light and shadows, what we're doing with our FX right now, apart from the fact that we're trying to make our skin smoother, we are trying to make, we are trying to blend the transitions from lights to shadows you get just make sure in your head back of your head you know where the uh, what they call where the light is coming from and know that you're trying to blend the transition from light to shadow and also do it carefully so that you don't you don't destroy the curves the normal contours of the face you get so you don't destroy the normal contours of the face mm, you could use frequent separation to contour a face so depending on what you want to you just make sure you don't destroy it or just carefully do it to get so one thing i like doing when i'm doing frequency separation i like making a selection that's like just make the selection of the body the reason why is so that my sick my uh, what they call my brush tool i try to make sure i don't want it to go outside the image another thing you should know is for the setting of our mixer brush tool i make sure i make sure my we are on a clean brush make sure you're on a clean brush make sure this is selected make sure you are using a soft round brush make sure your weight is on 15 to 25 depending on how much if you use 15 and feel it's too slow it's too is not enough you can increase it to about 20 25 make sure your load is on 30 your mixer is on 30 your flow is on 30 so now we're just going to work on our mix now yeah what they call mixing I work on a mix, uh, what they call it, frequency separation. We're just going to mix light to shadows. As you can see, like I told you, from lights to shadows, from lights to shadows. Let's see. From lights to shadows. We're just blending those transitions you get. We're trying to blend the transitions from lights to shadows. Where you see the highlights, you just blend them into the shadows you get. So as you can see, we're done with using the, mix, the mixer brush tool. So the next thing we're going to use uh, what they call the lasso tool to smooth in. So as you can see, we're still having some issue with the skin. So what we're going to do is use the lasso tool. So I'm just going to start from the head, forehead. I'm just going to start like that. Okay, so I'm going to go to filter, go to noise, media. <clears throat> then I'll multiply the radius I used before by two, three. You could do it by two, do it by three. So depending on how it is, first of all, I'll do it by three and see how it is 12. Okay. Was there a difference before, after? Okay. That's okay. Okay. 
So I'm just going to go around the image and do the same thing. So as you can see, I'm just going around the face. I'm going to go for this. Okay, I think I've gone for the face and this bro part. Let's see. Same thing here. Okay, so we're doing the nose too. And lastly, we're going to do the the middle of the nose. The middle of the nose. But for the middle of the nose, we don't use the same median. The reason why is because we don't want the image to look flat. So we'll go to the middle of the nose and then we're going to divide that one by two. We use 12, right? So we'll divide it by two, which will be six. Okay. We'll also do that. Use that same median for the lips. Use it for the lips. Z. Now place I like using it for again is the brow. I don't know, I just decided to use it at least smoothing my brow a bit. So, that same median, if you decide that you want to use it for the old skin, you could do the same thing. But for me, I'm not doing it for the old skin for this image. So, before, after, before, after. Another thing I noticed is we're still having some dot some spots on the skin so what you do to clean that up is you go to the high layer pick your clone stamp make sure your pass is at 100 and your flow is at 15 you open it up and then just clean up those spots you see you get those spots you see you can just clean them up Make sure you're just selecting from places close, close to um, to where you're cleaning up. You get. Let's go through the image. I don't think I have spots here. So another thing you could do after that is okay. I think I'm seeing some things here. Another thing you could do after that is just pick your your mixer brush tool again. Go back to the low layer and try to blend in. Sometimes when you use that lasso tool, you have some hard edges later. So just try to blend in the edges on your skin you get just go through it and then just try to blend in see the edges and then just try to blend them in again you get just try to blend them in because sometimes it really it sometimes affects the edges so that's just what i try to do after everything so now we have a clean image you get before after before after so that's dodge and burn so next thing before I go, I said that's that was, um frequency pressure. The next thing I'm go I'm going to do is um, um what they call it uh dodge and bond. But before that I want to okay yes let's first do dodge and bond. Oh no, let's first clean up the noise. Like I told you, I'm having some noise on this image, and then I also want to sharpen the image a bit. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a stamp layer again. Control Alt Shift E. Go to Filter. Go to Camera Raw Filter. Like I said, I want to clean up a bit of the um, or what they call it, a bit of the noise on the skin. I want to clean up a bit. So I'm just going to in, okay zoom in and then I'll go to Detail. Like I said, you've seen the noise, so you just use noise reduction and then just a bit like i said not too much one thing about noise if you do it too much you are smooth it's smoothening the skin removing all the old textures you get so like i said i don't want it too much so let's say around 15. so let's see before after before after okay that's nice so that's nice I, i'm still having my textures there and then i've been able to reduce remove the noise a bit so what I'm going to do is just click on OK and then I'm just going to make a selection of just the or just the subject and then make a max out of that. So that noise, the noise I've done is just affecting just the skin, you get just the skin. So I'm going to create another stamp layer again, Control Shift E, I'll go back to, I'll go to filter. Like I said, I want to sharpen just the subject alone. Again, I want to sharpen it a bit. You don't need to do this, you get. You really don't need to do this. But the reason why I do all this is just to make my image come out sharper at the end of all the editing and all, you get. Just make my image come out as sharp as possible. And still not re reducing the visual uh, impact it will still give you, you get. How beautiful it will make okay and natural as and natural as possible so i go to high pass and then i just pick on i can like i said this image was not that sharp normally so i don't want to do something that would affect it too much so let's try two first and then click on okay change the blend mode to soft light then okay let's zoom in let's see what happens so you just have to be careful with this before after before after one thing about this is when there's a lot of noise, when you do sharpening, it tends to bring back that noise. So you have to be careful, you get. So I'm going back to my stamp layer. I'm going back. I'm going to filter. So this time I'm going to reduce that noise. Let me. I'm, I'm going to reduce the high pass. So let me use 1.5. Okay. And change the blend mode to soft light. Mm, before, after, before after uh, still not okay for me so i'm going to go back filter other high pass so this time i'm just going to use 1.2 so that's not too much okay change it to change the blend mode to soft light okay i think that's better before after apply not too much but still sharpen the image okay that's okay for me that's okay for me that's okay for me so next thing I'm just going to put those two into one first of all I'm just I'm going to do the same thing create a select the subject and then make it into a mask so that the sharpening is affecting just the subject so I'm just going to put those into one um, folder and name that sharpen and then I'm going to right now I want to do dodge and bond but I'm not really doing dodge and bond this is going to be a fat fast piece a fast type of dodge and bond so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to select subject and then go to my adjustment layer and click on curves then i'm going to just hype it up a bit bring it up a bit from the middle point then i'll double click on my, that my curves layer so it brings up this layer style panel so what you're going to do is um you're going to bring this one to the side then hold your halt and click on it again you see that divided it so you take that one down to the side you get so this is what i do when i want to just have a sort of quick dodge and burn so i click on ok as you can see before after so what this thing does is it helps me alight enhance my my what they call it it enhances the, the shadows and, and what they call it. it enhances the shadows and brightness of or from what they call it of the subject so i could just increase it 
or reduce it depending on what I feel like you get so before after before after that's okay so what I'm going to do next is what I forgot to do I want I I should have cleaned up the clothes but I'll just leave it like that it's not too rough you get so I'll leave it like that next thing I'm going to do now is like I said I'm still on the dodge and burn out I want to enhance like give the image a bit of dimension so what I'm going to do now is I go to layers I go to new go to new layer I go to change the blend mode to soft light then make sure I'm clicked on fill with soft light neutral color 50% gray I make sure I click that I click on ok I pick my brush tool make sure my opacity is at 100 and my flow is at 100 at 1 then I first pick my my I'll change the color of the brush to black by either clicking on X clicking on when you click on X you see that around here you either each either changes to white or change to black when you want to dodge when you want to dodge you, you make use of the white brush when you want to burn you change it with X and make use of the black brush so right now I'm just going to dodge and burn this part of the eyebrow like I said I just want to give my image a bit of dimension so I'm just going to bring out the eyebrow around here to dodge here I'm going to dodge here too do the same thing for here if this was an headshot or a more close shot and um, close close shot image I would have also used this to enhance the eyes but since this is a full image it really doesn't sh it wouldn't really wouldn't show um the enhancement i would make to the eye so i don't do that for full images one th another thing i'm going to do is i'm going to dodge the middle part of the nose then i'm going to burn this part of the nose too yeah i'm also going to burn here Like I said, I'm just going to give this image a bit of dimension. I'm going to dodge the middle of the lips. And I'm going to burn here. Let me off all this. So I see the contour of the face. The way it is normally. So I'm going to burn here. I'm also going to burn here. So, I'm also going to go in here. So, let's on everything. Let's see before, after. See how I've given the face contour just with that few stuff. Just with those few tricks. So, that's all for the my quick dodge and burn. That's all for my quick dodge and burn. I'm going to put all that into one folder, into one group and name that DB, which is dodge and burn. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to whiten this eyes. I'm going to whiten the eyes. Open it. And I'll open my, I'm just going to use, open my eye whitening action. It's going to be, there's going to be a link in the description below. So you can just download that if you don't have it. And I'm just going to pick on this photo filter layer. Change the fill for that to 70 go to my brush to make sure my flow is at 100 and I'm just going to paint over the whites of the eyes you use white to paint and then you use blacks to delete the black brush to delete so when I've painted outside where I should paint I'll use the black brush to just delete it use X to toggle between black and white brush you get So, I think that's all for the eyes. That's all for the skin. So, that's all for skin retouching. That's all for skin retouching. Let me put everything into one group so you'll be able to see all we've done. So, I'm going to put all those into one group. And name that skin. So, as you can see, before, after, before, after, before, after clean right yeah that's really really clean so next thing we're going to do is i'm going to just make a stamp layer ctrl or shift e 
I make a stamp layer then I go to filter go to camera raw so I use camera raw for all my color grading like I use camera raw for all my color grading so what I'm going to do now is so what I'm going to do now is um, I'll first start with the calibration you get I'll go to calibration and then I'll start from the blues make my saturation 7 or 8 around there then I'll move it downward is this what I want nope so I'll move it upwards this is what I want not, not too much so I'm just going to leave it around here yeah this is okay so I'm doing the same thing for my greens 8 take it here not what I want yes this is what I want so I'm going to leave it around here too for my reds, I make sure not to touch the reds too much. The reason why is because reds affect a lot with the skin, does a lot with the skin. So if you affect it too much, especially for a black skin, you get. So I swear for with the blacks, if you use reds, it affects the skin. Let me show you. If I put this at 7, you'll see, then I move this or move this, move it around here. See how I could just really affect the skin. It will be good for the overall image. But for the skin, it makes it too red. And for here, this is not what we want. So I need it around here. But because of the skin, I have to be careful. So I'm just going to do make it around T, and then bring this up, and then just make the hue around five. So I've not done much to the skin before, after, before, after. That's good. Before, after, before, after. One thing you can do now is just work on this one. Get around yes, okay. This one too. So you can see before, after, before, after. It really looks like you've not done much, but seriously, you've done some things. So next thing you're going to go to color mixer. I mean color grid, color grading, and then you just go to. You first work on the shadows, bring this one down a bit. See, it's already giving us what we want. So just bring it and then just take it around. See, colors about is about feelings, depending on you what you want for your image. You get what do I want for this image? What feel do I want? So just go to your, your, your color grade, start with the shadows and just see what do I want for the feel of this image. You get so for me, I'm feeling I'm liking this feel around here. So I'll go to the highlights too. I'll bring that down too a bit. You see that this stuff, the more you bring it down, the more you're messing with the saturation. So I make sure I don't bring it down too much. I just bring it around here. You get around here. Around that dot you see that I just leave it around there. Reason why is so that I don't mess with the saturation too much. And then when you work with color grading, you should know that is especially this color grading panel. Anywhere you put your shadows let your highlights be around the opposite of that place it can might not be exactly but just make it around there you see my shadow is, around, is here so i can make my highlights around here or here just around this place the reason why why i said it works well i've tried it and i've been using it for a long time i find out it works well it usually doesn't look good if your highlights and your shadows are around the same color except, except if that's what you want though if that's what you want then no problem so for me, I like moving around the opposite of each other. And I think this is okay for me. This is okay. Last but not least is the mid tones, which we set everything. So we just work with it and see where you want your mid tones to be around here, right? Okay, this is nice for me. This is okay. As you can see, before, after, before, after. Another thing you do now is go to your course, which is the last for color grading. Go to your course. You give it three dots here. This just sets the overall feel. There's something I did. Like I've done a color grading for one of the images I shot during the shoot. That is one of these um, set, set of images. I've done the color gradings and I've saved it, which I'll apply later. But there's something I just... This curves layer just sets the overall piece of the image. This is what I did for the previous one. So I just... I When I moved it a lot, I just liked how dramatic my image just felt. You get? You see the normal stuff. If I just did it a bit, it'll be okay. But I just felt how dramatic I could use the curves to what I could achieve with the curves, how dramatic I could. You see what I'm doing now? You see what I'm doing now? I could just make my image feel more dramatic, you get just with the curves layer. 
you see what i've done to my image before after just with the curves layer so as you can see we have taken this image from before after before after you see how dramatic it is but like i said we like to keep the colors consistent especially when you've done one edit before so what i'm going to do like i said if this is your new first edit what you can do is just go to load and save click on save click on save then go to where you want to save that color grading and click on save but me i've done one previously so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to go to this place and click on load so if you've done a color grading of that same image or that set of image before you just have to save it and then when you're doing the next one you don't have to do the color grading all over again you just have to come here go to your camera roll then go to load then you go to where you saved your colors like now i saved mine here i click on ok and i click on open as you can see it will uh, it will apply it to that image this was what this was the color grading i did before you see it was not too different from the one i just showed you guys so i click on ok so this is my color grading so we went from this to this or went from this to this beautiful right what color grading can do color grading is magic it's magic to an image you could not even you could decide not to even do frequency separation and all that and they'll just clean up the skin and then just apply color grading and you still have a beautiful image you get you still have a beautiful image i do that to clients who want their image to look as natural as possible you get so next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to separate the image from the background and to do that i'll just make a selection of the image of the subject i mean so i make a selection of the subject and then i go to levels then first of all i'll just manipulate the middle not too much yeah then this one bringing a bit of shadows to it this one too you can see before after before after and i'm just i'm trying to be careful not to make this too artificial you get so before after okay that's nice i've been able to bring the image out of the out of the background a bit you get normally i do add vigent but this is a fashion shoot you get this is a fashion shoot so i don't want to add vigent to this image so next thing i'm going to create another stamp layer then i'm going to sharpen this image with that so i'll go to filter i'll go to camera raw i'll go to camera raw and then i'll go to basic i'll go to basic and i'll go to texture i'll give this image a bit of texture let's say 14 let's see okay 10 is okay for this particular one okay then on that same layer i'll go to filter i'll go to order high pass then i'm just going to use a radius of 1.2 for this image i'll click on ok i change my blend mode to soft light so i've been able to sharpen that image once more again as you can see before after so i've been able to sharpen that image again so last but not the least is going to your brightness and contrast go to brightness and contrast and click on just click on uh, what they call it just click on um just click on auto first this is why i told you to click on auto first so that you see what photoshop thinks about where your lights and shadows where your brightness and contrast should be sometimes you usually, usually just like what photoshop gives you and sometimes photoshop just does it quite a lot like now right now i like what photoshop gave but for me i feel the contrast is too much so what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to reduce that contrast yeah i like mine around here i like mine around here so what i'm going to do again i'll go to brightness increasing the bit i don't like it i reduce it to see you see that's one thing you just do about this okay this is okay so as you can see we've done all we can do as you can see before before after before after before after so this is all about this is all about retouching this is about full retouching this is all about tutorial for today if you like this tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to share and I will see you in the next tutorial. Have a wonderful day, guys.